In this instructional snippet we will use Bernoulli's equation to solve for the velocity of a free jet issuing from a large tank open to atmosphere. This snippet will introduce and explain some common assumptions made in setting up and solving Bernoulli's equation. These include, a free surface, velocity in a large tank, a free jet, and the vena contracta. As covered in a previous instructional snippet, Bernoulli's equation is, pressure plus one half rho v squared plus rho g z is constant. This is an expression of conservation of mechanical energy. The restrictions on the use of this equation are, 1, steady state, 2, incompressible, 3, negligible viscous effects, 4, along a streamline. In applying Bernoulli's equation we identify two points with the goal that for one point we will know all three of the terms and the second point contains the unknown for which we are seeking a solution. Using this method Bernoulli's equation equates the three terms from point 1 to point 2. Care must be taken that the four restrictions listed above are satisfied or at least reasonable. The example in this instructional snippet is perhaps the most basic application of Bernoulli's equation, however, an understanding of how to apply Bernoulli's equation for this simple example will be applicable to more complex and interesting problems. Let's find the velocity of a stream to atmosphere issuing from a large tank. First a large tank of diameter capital D. Let's put water in it. Let's open it to atmosphere. And note the free stream at depth H. The diameter of the hole in the tank is denoted with a small letter D. Before we get started, please note the standard symbol used to denote a free surface. It is a downward pointed triangle. We are seeking the velocity of the free stream issuing from the bottom of the tank. That will be one of the points we choose in the application of Bernoulli's equation. In this example it is denoted as point 2. Point 1 is chosen as the free surface. Let's see what we know about the pressure, velocity, and elevation for both points 1 and 2. Both the free jet at 2 and the free surface at 1 are exposed to atmospheric pressure so we will for now assume that the pressure for both points 1 and 2 are atmospheric. Things are actually a bit more complex for the free jet and we will discuss that later in this snippet. We will set the elevation datum at point 2 so the elevation of point 2 is 0. The elevation at point 1 is then h. The velocity at point 2 is the unknown and denoted by v2. The velocity at point 1 is considered to be 0. Is it 0? No, if it were then we are not analyzing along a streamline. If the diameter of the tank, capital D, is much greater than the diameter of the free jet, small letter d, then this is a reasonable assumption. It is a common assumption in the application of Bernoulli's equation and related equations using conservation of energy. Note that if the tank is actually draining then we are violating the steady state restriction. Again, if the tank diameter is large this is a reasonable assumption and a common approach. Now let's solve for the velocity of the free jet, denoted as V2. First let's simplify with what we already know. Skipping the algebra, we get the velocity at point 2 is equal to the square root of 2 times the acceleration of gravity times h. We should always ensure our results has the correct dimensions or units. In this case we have the square root of foot per second squared times feet. This results in feet per second, which is what we would expect. This result should look familiar. In year 1643 an Italian physicist, Torricelli, obtained the result that the velocity of a free jet fluid stream at a depth of h from a large tank that is open to atmosphere will have the same velocity as a ball dropped from the height h if air resistance is negligible. The solution shows that the free jet velocity depends on the square root of the depth, in this case denoted by h. The cartoon below shows three jets at different depths, which results in three different jet velocities. Which one is correct? Typically the midpoint of the free jet is chosen. This is representative of the average jet stream velocity. Many academic problems will simply draw the free jet at the vertical midpoint location so you likely won't even think about it. We still have a few questions about the free jet. What is the diameter of a free jet? Is it reasonable to assume it is the same diameter as the tank outlet? Is it reasonable to say the pressure of the free jet is equal to the surrounding pressure? We won't go into details but as the picture shows the streamlines in the tank are curved to allow the flow to exit the tank. The curved streamlines results in a stream diameter smaller than the tank outlet. The location with the minimum diameter is known as the vena contracta. Note that the streamlines are parallel at the vena contracta. This has significance when we justify using the surrounding pressure as the pressure of the free jet. We will dive into this next. Bernoulli's equation can be derived by applying conservation of linear momentum along a streamline. But what about normal to a streamline? The equation below gives the pressure gradient in the normal direction. 
it is a function of the density, velocity squared and the radius of curvature. The curvature for straight streamlines is infinite, resulting in a zero pressure gradient in the normal direction. The parallel and straight streamlines are sufficient to define the pressure gradient at the vena contracted to be equal to zero. Since the pressure gradient at the outside of the free jet is zero it must be equal to the surrounding pressure. Thus, the pressure over the entire vena contracta is equal to the surrounding pressure. What is the diameter of the vena contracta? There are correlations to determine the diameter of the vena contracta, we will not cover that in this instructional snippet. If it is an academic problem then the problem statement, and what you have covered in the course, should make it clear whether you need to determine this diameter. Proceed accordingly. In a real problem, is Bernoulli's equation the best choice, you should always proceed to find the best answer possible. Unfortunately, real life challenges don't always come with obvious input data and hints on how to find a meaningful solution. Experience helps. Summary. A free surface is at the pressure of its surroundings. A standard assumption is that the fluid velocity inside a large tank can be considered negligible if the tank diameter is comparatively large. The reference elevation for a horizontal free jet is typically chosen as the vertical midpoint. Flow through an orifice will typically result in a vena contracta. If possible, the diameter of the vena contracta should be used in calculations, not the diameter of the orifice. A free jet is at the pressure of its surroundings at the location where there is no curvature. I hope you found this instructional snippet useful. If so, please like and subscribe. Future instructional snippets will show more interesting application of Bernoulli's equation. Thanks and have a great day.